Well, good evening, everybody. And today is August 24th, 2022. And I'd like to welcome you to the uh, weekly Wine and Dine. Uh, we're very excited that you're here this evening. We have a great lineup for you all. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Jacqueline, and I've been with Wine Ambassador since the start and absolutely love these wines. Um, but with further ado, I am going to introduce to you our very own Rory Rickard, because we start each uh, week with a toast. So, Rory. Hello, hello. Um, so, I know we were chatting earlier, the guys on there, I'm drinking the Pinot Noir as well. Um, I, I got to tell you guys, like, Pinot Noir, it's, it's a very special wine. And, um, and it's, it's a delicate wine. A lot, some people don't understand this. It's really easy to mess it up. The winemakers that make Pinot Noir have they have they have to have a really really awesome touch. It's a delicate it's a delicate grape and and it can go bad. It's it's a very risky wine to make, and those that do it well do it well. But I I have to tell you it's a very fragile, but it also comes with that subtlety of taste. So when it's done right, it blends so well. And the flavonoids that come out of a Pinot Noir are usually very specific. And there, and there is a, it's a fun wine to learn how to taste with. So I always tell everybody, when in doubt, Pinot Noir. Meaning, I'm going to go to a dinner party. I'm going to bring a bottle of wine. I don't know what to bring, Pinot Noir. Um, I'm going to have a meal. I'm not sure what to pair it with, Pinot Noir. It, it's, the, it's a very versatile, but it's because of the complexities of it and how delicate it is. So that being, that being said, I um, want to reflect it on to how we you know, share our wine wine experiences here with our others and we get to share this incredible wine of the month experience and club that's unlike anything else that's out there and we get to share in these wonderful discoveries of wine and um you know in in that whole process of that we get to learn things and i just want to put a man I, i'm going to just put a big great gratitude here this toast tonight goes to jim Rohn for me because without him taking an evening with me to share with me how wine was really made and what the differences were we probably wouldn't be here today and so to jim Rohn, who who is looking from on on high this is to you my friend thank you for everything Salud. Cheers. thank you very much for that rory so we're going to get moving along with the program and guys we have a phenomenal lineup uh this evening with uh several cooks and Sheila Matchett is um, going to host for us tonight. We're very excited about that. She's my sweetheart uh, out of North Carolina. And so, Sheila, take it away, sweetheart. Hey, guys. How are y'all? Um, as you can see, I'm dressed. We have a theme. I always like to have a theme uh, whenever we cook um, with our group. And um, our theme tonight is nursery foods, adult style. Can y'all hear me? Yep. So um, I like to dress. Uh, we kind of had some confusion earlier in the week about whether we were cooking or not, but we pulled it out. Um, so as you can see, I'm Maleficent with my 250 star phone and, <laughs> <laughs> and a little foil uh, headset. But um, we have some amazing cooks here today. Um, Char is going to do a pizza pretzel and a strawberry shortcake dessert. Uh, we have Lisa um, Grunwald that's going to do a um, appetizer of toast. I can't remember what it was. Um, almond, uh, almond toast. Yeah. yeah, almond butter. So it's toasted. It's almond butter toast with berries and chocolate. There you go. And then um, like I said, all of this is going to be our nursery foods that you would normally feed your kids and or in daycare, but we're upping it up a little bit to make it adults because, you know, not all adults like to admit to liking nursery foods. <laughs> 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 so, and then we have our amazing Lori Houlihan, um, who is going to do a twist on PB&J. Be ready for that, guys. And then I'm going to do a twist on mac and cheese. I got three grands. Guess what? They always want my house, mac and cheese. Well, you know, I have to fix it up a little bit. <laughs> just for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to Miss Lisa, and she is going to start out with her toast. Hello, 
Hi, everybody. So um, I find that this is a fabulous little finger food. They're, they end up being like little bites. And if you haven't had fresh ground almond butter, I suggest you go to your health food store, like Whole Foods or something, and get it. And when you grind it fresh, it comes out warm. So I always eat it when I'm grinding it because it's really good. <laughs> But, um, and you want to toast your toast a little darker than normal because you want it to be firm because you're getting going to cut your toast into at least four squares or nine squares. So, um, and this is my, so my toast is toasting right now, but this is my almond butter. So you can see that. And you just mix it. It'll separate a little bit sometimes, but just mix it in. It comes out really perfect. It's wonderful. And then I'm doing strawberries and raspberries. So I'm going to do half and half. Oh, wow. I have two different chocolates. I have 100% cocoa, dark chocolate. And then on the raspberries, I'm actually doing dark chocolate raspberry flavored. So those are going to be the two toppings. And this, I'm going to pull this down just a tad so you can see the difference in the colors of the chocolates. Oh, so yeah. I grade them with my little cheese grater and it works perfect. So you don't have to get a fancy grater or anything for your chocolate. Just use this over a plate and grate it and it comes out just perfect. So, and I'm pairing it. I wasn't sure what I was gonna pair it with, but I decided to go with the 2017 Paso Robles Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, so very that nice. that is the one that I'm doing. It, um, I tested this whole recipe and everything over the weekend. And that went so well with 100% dark chocolate because 100% dark chocolate tends to be kind of bitter. And that cab just smoothed everything right out with the toast and the almond butter and the berries. It just absolutely went phenomenal. So I am going to show you really quick how dark I do my toast so that when it gets cooler, it stays really crispy because sometimes your berries are juicy and things like that. So um, anyway, so that's why you want to over toast it just a tad. You don't want it to be flimsy or soft or anything like that. Perfect. So do you want me to continue? Sheila, or do you want to go to somebody else as the prep when I can put it together? Or? You go ahead and finish prep or do your prep, and we're going to jump over to Char since she's doing double duty today and let her get started with hers. So, me start? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I'm going to start <laughs> with the pretzels. My kids. I had to buy like cases of these things because they would eat them all the time. You know, these little goodies. Oh yeah. yeah huge boxes of them. They would go through them like crazy, but this is what it starts with, the, the pretzel. So what I do is I tear one of them apart into pieces and I fill in the holes. So I make it a solid so that cheese and, and everything doesn't go through the bottom. So I brushed it with a brush with garlic butter. And now I'm going to, I don't know if you can see me good enough, but I'll put it on here. So I take some mozzarella, it's pre-cut, and I'm putting mozzarella on three pieces, I think on each. We can see it, Char. Okay, good, good, good. And then I bought these little teeny mini pepperonis. They're so cute. They're really good for snacking too. <laughs> But the kids love them. You can have your kids help you make these. It's absolutely fun. My son used to stand on a chair and help me bake. It's, it's just a lot of fun. It's good family time. Um, and then you just, uh, I'm putting these on top. You could probably put paint, uh, you could put any kind of topping on here. I thought about maybe sausage or ham, um, just about any kind of meat. And then, Oh, you know what I forgot? Put some of this on. A little bit of sauce. A 
and it doesn't go through because you kind of stuff the holes with the pieces of pretzels. It looks yummy, yummy, yummy. And then, you know, you can never have too much cheese, right? So then you put grated cheese on top of that. Holy Jesus. And what are you pairing that with, sweet baby girl? Oh yeah, I'm having, well, I have a little aerator on top of mine, but this is, the, I have the Pinot Noir as well. I love this, I love this. It's one of my favorites. Although the Rick and Merlot is my very favorite, but this is probably comes in second. So there you have it. I'm gonna stick it in the oven and watch it get melty and bubbly. And um, then uh, when we come back, I can show it. I won't show you what this looks like, then I'll, I'll construct the uh, dessert. Well, thank you so much. It looks heavenly, honey. And I bet it's gonna pair really well with that Pinot. Miss Sheila, where do you wanna go next, darling? Our next one's gonna be Miss uh, Houlihan over there. Gonna see what she's doing that twist with that PB and J. Okay, so I'm on a different computer because I couldn't get the other one to sound. I'm talking and waving my hands. <laughs> so um, this one here, I'm gonna have to show you. I'm gonna have to cut my head off. So <laughs> <laughs> it seems like in nursery rhymes, moms never fared very well anyway. <laughs> Especially those stepmoms, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I already did my um, bacon and I do it in the oven. I put foil down. You can do um, parchment paper but I think foil cleans up a little easier. So I use a heavy duty foil. I lay them out. I don't let them hardly a touch at all. Do not let them overlap. You shouldn't even have to turn them. I have to turn them in my oven because I have trouble with my oven. But so they turn out great. Like I love, you know, and if you want it a little crispy or not quite, you just have to watch really close. So then the bacon is done. Then I take bread. And you see, I have one on here, but I take a piece of bread, I butter one side, I throw it on. I While it's on here, I uh, put the peanut butter on it. And my husband prefers crunchy. I do smooth. And then I take another piece, I butter it, and I put the jelly on it. But before I lay it on, I take a whole piece of bacon, cut it in half, and then... Um, so I have one half because I have one left and then a whole piece and I cut it in half to make sure it's fully covered. And then I put my jelly on top. Now you can use any jelly you want. We've experimented with a lot of things and our preference is definitely uh, the grape. I don't know what the difference is, but the grape and the uh, bacon, that little bit of hickory in the bacon, I don't know, there's something about the peanut butter the grape and the bacon. Um, wow. Then I grill it. I, I butter both sides, of course, and I grill it. On I used a pan for years. Now I have a nice griddle, as you can see, my beautiful griddle. <laughs> and um, <laughs> this one here is just about ready to take off. So I'm going to do that. And I'll cut it and show you what it looks like. Hopefully this one is a really gooey one. Okay, I can't, yeah, you can see it. Okay, so then when you get, cause it's almost like grilled cheese, only just different insides to it. It's not the toasted like you normally do. And you end up with this. Oh my gosh, this stuff is Beautiful. so good. Oh, that's it really is, good. and make sure you put enough jelly. So um, when you guys come back, well, my husband is going to test it out. We have uh, the Grenache that we're going to pair it with. Oh, I bet that'll be good. We're gonna find out. Sounds good. And scrumpy. we'll like, actually see our faces when we do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never thought about putting bacon on peanut butter and jelly, but you know, bacon goes with everything. Here in the South, yes. bacon goes with everything. <laughs> yes, it does, it does. So. <laughs> That, that's a staple. I, mean, that. <laughs> I will be trying that. You can bet because I'm a peanut butter and peanut butter and jelly girl. There you go. 
All right, thank you, Ms. Laura. And so now we have me and we're gonna see if we can get me to work. Um, so I'm gonna mute my, mute my computer and get my phone to work. All right, can you, woo! Now, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am, you go. I just love those horns, they are darling. <laughs> All right, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. All right. So what I've done is, um, let me see if I can get this flip screen to flip, is I'm making mac and cheese and um, it's not the standard. You're going to use the standard mac and cheese box, but as you can see, I have vegetables. Can you see that? You need to go to your other side. A little bit more, a little bit to the, keep going. Nope, the other way. Other way? The other way. Yes, ma'am. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Perfect. All right. So I got vegetables in there. I got chopped onions, celery, cilantro, all kind of little goodies. Same thing with my meat. And I'm going to mix these two together along with um, cream of mushroom. Uh, here we go. Uh, I got Mexican nacho cheese in a can. Yes. Cream of mushroom and breadcrumbs. Oh, wow. Yep. And of course, more cheese. So I'm gonna mix all those together and everything's cooked. So you can eat it just like that plain, um, which normally I do while it's baking. Um, and, but then I'm gonna put it in a casserole dish, add more cheese to the top, spread it with um, some, uh, not really ripe, but kind of almost not ripe tomatoes. And we're gonna bake it at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. Oh, wow. That sounds yummy, yummy, yummy. And it will go straight to, through my lips on my <laughs> hips, baby. I could just and, see. And, and, of, and of course, you know, I have to get with my trusty advisor, Mr. Peter. <laughs> and um, <laughs> say, so he told me, you know, cheeseburger is one of his favorites. So um, we are pairing it tonight with his Antonio. Oh, I bet that will be good. And the thing about this wine, I had none, Peter. I had none. I couldn't find any. <laughs> and um, I was cleaning out my box where I keep my wine at. Uh, and I was like, okay, what's this? There's something here. It's not, there was a box of unopened wine. Can you believe that? I had a box of unopened wine and that happened to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 2018. Oh, wow. Cabs. So, um, yeah. So uh, imagine how long that's been. It also had the 2021 Grand Cru um, in there. So, oh um, wow! Yeah, so um, it was well, a you very can get good box. Going down to Texas when you come in a couple of weeks. I will because right? you, you know I got my uh, wine suitcase now, right? <laughs> hey man, hey, they travels well. I'll exactly. pick you up at the airport. All right, so I'm gonna get these together, and then we're gonna jump back to Lisa and see how she's coming. Okay. And Miss Stacy or. Uh, Linda, have y'all been, as, as we're going through, y'all placing from, uh, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I was able to get everything together. So um, in my recipe on my page, when you go to see it, you'll see that I like to put my almond butter all the way to the very edge of the toast. Um, because the toast is very crispy and kind of dry and the almond butter and then the berries and then the chocolate are just a wonderful combination. So I am just going to tilt this down. Oh, oh holy I I lost moly. Three. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Just a second. There we go. I'm going to have to pick the plate up. So this is what it looks like when it's plated. Oh my, oh my. So, yeah, so I put the raspberry chocolate on the raspberry and then I put the dark 100% cocoa chocolate on the strawberries on the toast. And you can see they come out into just little nice bite-sized pieces. Oh, so, that's great. <laughs> so they Y'all really be sure to get that good. recipe. And they're super easy and you can make them larger. You can cut the toast into, you know, four pieces or six pieces. I just tend to do nine because I like a lot of little pieces and they look pretty on the plate. <laughs> yeah, fills up the plate. It well, does, it does. Um, 
And then one, th I did want to share one other thing. I found these crazy wine glasses and they have a dip where your nose goes when you sip. So you can take a sip. I'm going to stop talking so I can show this to you. So when you take a sip, your nose actually goes inside of the glass. And I found these at a winery. That so, is really cool. So you can breathe in, take a sip of the wine, and you get a much more intense experience when you're tasting wines. So this is just like one of my little golden finds. <laughs> That's a good golden so, find. It was, and I've looked for them, and I've never seen them again. So I don't know. Has anybody seen I've them? I've never heard never anything like that. that. Oh, wow. they're, they are absolutely amazing. Um, the fact that you can get your nose inside of the glass, because they always say, sniff, you know, like breathe in, take your sip. This actually makes that easy. Wow. So that's why if you ever find a strange looking wine glass, that's what this is for. That's to get your cool. nose inside go of the glass. That is neat. Yeah, they're so did you taste the taste cool. of your did you taste the taste of your toast so you could tell us what how that paired with uh the wine? Not yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I, I will. Let me I'll I can do that right now or we can keep moving and I can do it when we come back. That's up to Sheila. Um, Sheila, are you ready for her to pair? You want me to yes, finish? If she's ready, yes, go right ahead. She's ready, yeah. Okay. Go ahead and pair, honey. Okay. So, um, like I said, more than news, um, 2017, Paso Robles Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, and I picked this specifically really because of the 100% cocoa that I put on the strawberry bites. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and take a bite of and, and then sip the wine. Those are so good. Seriously. <laughs> you guys got to try these. <laughs> They're fun to eat. And if you're a big, bold, full-body red wine lover, they're perfect with that kind of wine. It's amazing. It cuts all the bitter right out of the dark chocolate. And so that everything just turns into this smooth, chocolatey, berry, gooey toast. It's so good. It sounds amazing. <laughs> it sounds amazing. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy this because it's fun. It doesn't take long to make it and people go nuts over these little bites. So enjoy them. Well, thank you. So I guess we're going to move along um, to, where are we going, Sheila? Miss Shaw. She's got to do her dessert. I am. And, and these pizza pretzels are ready. And I really want one badly, but I'm on a keto diet. So um, I might have to scrape the top off. <laughs> but. Let's they do look the, <laughs> um, the dessert is strawberry donut. Wow. So we use donuts instead of biscuits. Uh, Krispy Kreme, favorite, my favorite. Oh, Although my it's God. killing me to have these even in my house right now. But, okay, so what you do is you take a long knife and you cut the donuts in half like a bagel. And sugar-free whipped cream. Oh, I use this in my coffee every morning, a sweetener. <laughs> oh, wow. Zero carbs, zero carbs, so it's not too bad. So I put a little bit of this on first. Holy Just to make it full. Then I'll take the strawberries. And then, of course, you gotta have more whipped cream. Oh, Jesus. And then you take the top, press it down, and put a and little more whipped cream. cream. <laughs> Just a little more whipped cream. You have a little whipped cream. Of course, that, huh? if that's not enough, 
You can never have too much whipped cream. I Come have on. a dark chocolate as well, Lisa, and my little microplane. So I'm going to top it with a little chocolate. Oh, Jesus. And you're making that when we're at Jackie's, right? Oh, <laughs> my. So simple. That you is just go buy some donuts, beautiful. some whipped cream, and some strawberries. That's it. That's it. I'm oh changing my. my flight. I'm coming in early, Jackie. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that is beautiful, Char. Well, oh, I'm gonna have to, uh, if I have to taste it, I have to taste it. So I will taste that. Hey, hey, you're going to taste back. it, but we're going to come back. Mm -hmm. So Sheila, before we move on, why don't you tell us a bit about the wine club itself for those that are new here and uh, may want to learn a little bit. That is amazing. Um, we are part of a wine discoveries club, guys. And um, I have done a lot of research on wine clubs in general, and um, what I found out there's not very good or helpful. Um, most of the wine clubs out there are either selling overstock of other wines or they have mass produced wines. Um, they're not very boutique kind of wines. Um, you can buy them at any grocery store, any cheap retail store, any convenience store, you can find these wines. Our wines are exclusive just to us. Um, we have um, sommeliers that we have um, contracted out that make wines exclusively for us. And these are sommeliers that have, um, are generational. They've been doing this from generation and generation to generation. They have their own recipes. We just supply the great guys. Um, we have our own vineyard and um, it's amazing. We have different wines every month. So you really do get to discover what the wines are. Um, you get to find your palate, find, like Char says, she has a couple of, you know, favorites. It's kind of hard to choose between one or the other. Um, I've had some people that um, are usually predominantly red wine drinkers that all of a sudden discover that they like white, white wines because it's made in the right process. Um, when you have wine that's made properly, you don't get the headaches, you don't get the back text, you don't get the, you know, the other things that come with these mass produced wines. So, we come here every Wednesday night to discover new wines and new pairings. And um, we're not professionals, but we do have fun. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and you look amazing, I might add, my friend. And we just like to discover what our wines are capable of. Um, and like I said, everybody's palate's different. So what might be good for one person might not be good for their. Um, so like Peter's always said, you drink what you like, you like what you drink. Um, so we just do suggestions. You try it. If you don't like it, hey, you might want to use that red wine instead of that white. But guess what? You have the option to get that with our club. So that's that. If you want to get more information, get with the person that invited you here. If you want to see some more about it, join us on Monday night on this same call. And you can see exactly how you can turn this wine discovery program into maybe some side money. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that, Mama. You're Chief. very welcome. Thank you, thank you. So, right. um, Miss Lori, are you you ready to taste you and Papa over there? Yes, <laughs> I got my taster right here. So I'm going to take this fresh one off. I'm going to cut it in half for him. Hopefully he doesn't burn his tongue. <laughs> Let's hope not. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to take uh, a sip of the wine. I might He's even already take been sipping on it. <laughs> I have uh, today we have the wine ambassadors Grenache. It's very good. So I'm going to take a taste before I take a taste of the food. Absolutely. Oh. In one word, heaven. Just, <laughs> he likes that one. I'm a little partial to that one too. I like it a lot. It's very good. And, uh, and then this is one of my favorite meals. Mom always used to make peanut butter and jelly when I was little which was a long time ago, but uh, <laughs> we had a, <laughs> a Bible study probably like 
eight, nine years ago. Oh, yeah, at least. And uh, one of our young men that was a part of that, he was a chef. He went to school to be a chef. And each week we would all take turns having a meal. And and it was always, we were always excited about when he cooked. Yeah. And then he said, well, this week I'm going to make peanut butter and jelly with bacon sandwiches. And it was like, we were expecting this big souffle type meal. Anyway, we had that and it's become one of our favorite yeah. things. Yeah. And so it I'm looks delicious. Yeah, it, it really is. It, that bacon in there just makes it. Mm. Very good. Very good. The grenache brings out the flavor of the bacon. And then that's your first scent. And then you you taste the uh, jelly and then the peanut butter and then all together it's pretty good so oh wow peter how, how would you think that that would pair huh oh that's a terrific idea especially because of the bacon that's what i'm i'm glad you picked yeah. that out because that's what a red wine like a grenache will do it'll pick out sort of the richness and the smokiness of the bacon and obviously that's what you caught and and of course you know, grape jelly. Of course, you like grapes. We're we, we're we're hit. Grapes are our thing here. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a that, that's a terrific choice, and it's not too heavy, so it won't overwhelm no. it. No, it would nice, well, well chosen, good, good idea. And yeah, the Grenache that is a wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's one of those you could pair it with anything, and we just saw that again. That's really good. Uh -huh. Right. Well, thank you all. That that looked wonderful. Uh, can't wait to try that recipe. Um, so, Miss Sheila, you ready to go? I am. So I just pulled this one out of the oven. So let me see if I can get y'all to see it. So this is the finished product. Oh, open back up. <laughs> can you see it? Uh-huh. It's like mm -hmm. beautiful. You look at her face. She can see it. <laughs> I'm like, oh man. I can see it. I'm ready to cut into it. So um the tomatoes um just gives it a little extra coloring. You know, I'm all about the color, but it also adds to the layer. Now there's uh -huh. some people that doesn't like maybe beef. I actually use venison in mine. Um Ooh. we just like venison. Um, but some people can use beef. Um, you can use chicken um, in my recipe or in my page. I actually gave you the chicken. This one, I kind of used a, a mushroom base. If you use chicken, you can use the chicken or a celery soup base. If you want to use um, seafood, um, you can, or shrimp. It re This really tastes good with shrimp in it, guys. And use a celery uh, soup with it. Oh, wow. You'll be surprised at the flavors that come in there. Um, so this is what it looks like when you cut it up. You can see all the different layers in there. So you see, so this is actually a one dish meal. Um, we have it, I might pair it with, um, put some cucumbers on the side, another slice of tomato on there. Um, don't even need bread because you got the breadcrumbs in there that kind of holds it together. If it, you want it to be more solid, you can throw an egg in there. Um, but this is just one of those things. It's a comfort food. Like I said, I like mac and cheese. I probably cook it at least three or four times a day, a week with the grain. Day. A, a day. Sometimes it feels that way. <laughs> it's like uh, I'm, I'm almost to the point I'm going to keep a pot in the refrigerator and just nuke it when they get over here. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, so, Peter, can you tell me, because um, I'm still working on my palate and I didn't want to uh, let anybody let me dissuade them from trying it. So tell me why this would pair well with what I made. Well, Your the first thing you told me, when you told me cheeseburger mac and cheese, I'm like, okay, yeah. basically cheeseburger is the key word. That's, that's the flavor we're going at. And you didn't tell me about the tomato, but that makes it even better. So if you're having a cheeseburger and, or anything like that, you want a rich, something rich, a lot of meat, a lot of cheese, lot, you want a cab. The cab is the obvious, that's my first choice. And that's, of course, it's my favorite cab. You know that. But because uh, you want something with tannins. Tannins, when when you're not 
it sometimes can be unwelcome, but this is where they're, you're there at your best friend. You need those tannins to handle that rich, uh, all, all that, all the fattiness and the richness and all the flavor you have there. That's what's going to give you some structure and cut through all that and make it work beautifully together. Now, the, the flavor profile of a cab is also, it pairs nicely with tomatoes. And one of the things you always describe when you start looking at tasting notes, you'll see black pepper. Always see black pepper as one mm -hmm. of the tasting notes in cabs. And pairing food and wine is just like cooking. It's, it's adding how tastes go together. Would black pepper taste good in that combination of food? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, would it, would it enhance it? Yeah. So that's the, there's, there's why it works well as a pairing with food and wine pair, just like pairing food, just different flavors. It's all the same thing. And yeah, that black pepper notes, the, um, the richness, the, um, the tannins, the body, that's what you need for something like that. Perfect. And that's why wow. I say guys, this is a wine discoveries club. And like with me, I'm very, very, very green <laughs> when it comes to wine. <laughs> So I'm still trying. I'm still trying to discover my palate. So I ask the e experts on how I'm supposed to taste and what I'm supposed to taste. So I don't get it wrong. But then again, because this is a wine discovery, you can't get it wrong. You'll just discover different flavors, different tastes on how it's paired. Um, all you got to decide is whether you like the wine, plain and simple. And if you pair it with the right food, you're definitely going to like the wine. Um, so again, just jump on in. I hope we gave you some ideas on some wine pairings, some great recipes, some good times in fellowship. Um, I always love to cook. I always like to meet everybody. I always like to see their expressions and I love to cook myself. So these recipes just get added to my book. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I go to family get togethers, church get togethers or anything, I always have a new recipe and everybody's like, where did you get that? Oh, you need to come to my sh our show. You know, you, you, you need to come. So um, again, thank you for coming. Um, if you've seen anything that you liked here, um, you want to try it, especially our wines, get with the person that invited you. And I promise you, they know exactly what to do to get you connected with what we have. Back to you, Ms. Jacqueline. Well, thank you so much, Sheila. And we indeed hope all of you enjoyed this evening, learned a little bit um, uh, about the club as well as uh, got some, some fabulous recipes uh, to try. And I do believe um, uh, Stacy and Linda did put the, the uh, pages in the chat for you all. So be sure to check those out. Uh, you may even find some other goodies uh, around in those sites when you start looking. But uh, we will be here next week, same channel, same ch time. So please join us. But until then, bye for now. Bye.